Hey guys, this is Eckhart Slaughter. Hello and welcome to another video. We've got a classic episode today. We will be breaking down a ship from the Star Wars galaxy. Before we do, however, a lot of you guys have been asking me, where are your Versus episodes? I miss your Versus series. Well, I get it, and I don't have anything against doing more episodes. I really just need to find some matchups that I'm interested in. I honestly feel like I've done most of the episodes I've wanted to, and when I put episodes up for the poll for you guys to vote on, they never really do very well. So in the comments for today's video, leave a versus matchup you'd like to see me do on the channel and guys make sure that you upvote any recommendations that you like. So today we'll be talking about the Asserter class Dreadnought. This is a really interesting one. We've talked a few times now about fan creations within the Star Wars universe. In one video we talked about various fan and ships which I thought were pretty cool and in various other ones we've talked about the way that Star Wars and especially Star Wars comics have managed to steal Star Wars fan art. However, today's episode is different. We'll be talking about a ship, the Asserter, which originally was a fan design, but was actually canonized and properly canonized with credit through the Essential Guide to Warfare. The Asserter was one of the many amazing ships modeled by friend of the channel, Fractal Sponge. Now I'll include a link to Fractal's page down in the description, including his general website, his Discord, and his renders of the Asserter. I highly recommend you guys check him out. Fractal Sponge is one of the greats within the community and he often contributes to other projects as well and he just generally is a really cool dude. Anyway, let's talk about Fractal's version of the Asserter because there is a bit of a distinction between how Fractal originally envisioned the ship and how it would be brought into Star Wars Legends. And Fractal's version of the Asserter was much more powerful. Basically, he envisioned it as the most powerful Super Star Destroyer in existence. I'm not sure if he ever gave in official length, but the Asserter was said to have better power generation, firepower, shield strength, and equipment than the Executor, of course, its other contemporary. I think he intended the Asserter to be a newer ship than the Executor, and he said that the Asserter would have had superior ancillary equipment and would have had a more robust hull and power grid than earlier Dreadnoughts. He also puts power generation at perhaps two times that of the Executor, and says that in a battle, the Asserter would have decisive superiority over either the Executor or the Mandator, two other Dreadnought classes. From an acceleration standpoint, the Asserter would have been less mobile than something like the Executor, but more so than the large Dark Empire era Dreadnoughts and especially the Eclipse. On that note, a main feature of Fractal's Asserter is a super laser. Probably Probably less powerful than something like the Eclipse or perhaps even the Sovereign, but still strong enough to destroy a space station or a capital ship. We can see the aperture there on the front of the ship. Now the super laser was never explicitly brought into the continuity, however the aperture remained there, so either there's some other explanation for it or the super laser was still meant to be a part of the ship. Fractal says that the super laser is almost like a refined and more practical version of what would have been on the Sovereign or the Eclipse more focused on fighting enemy capital ships rather than overwhelming power, and because of that, the ship is more mobile and a bit more practical for other roles. The Asserter also has gravity well generators, giving it interdiction capabilities, and this is a feature that is really lacking on the Executor class and a really big benefit within any Imperial fleet. The generators are represented by small bubbles on the hull that you won't really notice unless you're looking for them. Otherwise, I would argue that the Asserter puts more weaponry on the actual hull. Then the Executor, the entire surface is basically clumps of very large turbo lasers, where the Executor seems to put a lot of its guns in the trench that runs around the ship. I think this does make the Asserter a little bit more practical. The ship also lacks the same cityscape that the Executor has, and which is sometimes portrayed as a major weakness, especially when facing off against starfighters. So that, combined with, I think, a better protected bridge, really gives the Asserter some nice design points. So, all in all, Fractal's Asserter is a very well-designed ship. It would have been stacked to the brim with various type of weapons, including turbo lasers, ion cannons, ordnance launchers, and more. It had, of course, that axial super laser, and it had more power generation, which would have helped shielding and firepower than the Executor, and perhaps any other Imperial Dreadnought, with the exception of the Eclipse. But it was very mobile, it was a very practical capital ship, and it would have been one-off, if not the best Dreadnoughts in the Star Wars galaxy in a pure combat role. So what happened when the ship was canonized? 
Well, it was scaled down a bit. The Asserter made its first Star Wars Legends appearance in The Essential Guide to Warfare. However, it's really just some images that Fractal Sponge made and a brief mentioning of a Asserter class named The Wrath. The best real source for lore was the Lead by Example RPG sourcebook. Now, these are, I guess, quasi-canon, technically they probably fell within the Legends continuity, but they're a lesser level of canon than most other things, especially this one which came out after Legends was formally ended. Anyway, Age of Rebellion makes the Asserter a clear second to the Executor in terms of power. It does not give the ship a super laser, but does say that it has enough firepower to destroy an entire planet. The Asserter is described as a command vessel and powerful mobile weapons platform platform, designed with an eye towards conventional fleet operations and sector command duties. To this end, it is equipped with a number of sophisticated communication and sensor suites, and it features command and control systems that allow its commander a nearly unparalleled view of the battlefield. So I do think this idea of the Asserter being a kind of high-tech SSD properly used in a command role is in keeping with the spirit of Fractal's creation. I would say Fractal Sponge would disagree with most of the numbers, but that's not really surprising. Especially where we don't know exactly when this ship fully entered Imperial service. It seems like before the Battle of Yavin, which would actually put it before the Executor. So at 15 kilometers long, I guess it is sort of hard to justify it as a more powerful ship. Although length is really not how you should be measuring ship power. The Asserter is really large. We see a very, very large reactor bubble on the bottom but ultimately that's what we're given. Lead by example also confirms that there were at least two named Asserters, the Asserter itself and then of course the Wrath, with both ships currently deployed with large battle groups to provide support for anti-alliance operations along the border between the Outer Rim and Mid-Rim territories. I kind of see these fleets almost like mini death squadrons, although it continues to say that it can be assumed that the Asserter and the Wrath are traveling with dozens of other ships, including smaller Dreadnoughts and Star Destroyers, and that might be a reference to the various fleets we see in the Essential Guide to Warfare. The Asserter is seen accompanied by Bellators and things like Praetors, basically other Fractal Sponge models, and I do like the idea of sort of roving fleets in the area between sort of civilization and the inner parts of the galaxy and the Outer Rim. The Asserter was technically re-canonized, or brought into Star Wars canon, in the Starships and Speeders sourcebook for the FFG role-playing game. Now again, this is sort of a questionable level of canon, but we've also had references to non-executor type Super Star Destroyers in the Aftermath trilogy, so I'm happy to accept this reference. But that's all I have to say about this, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure you go check out Fractal Sponge. This video is basically made off of his creations, so it would be really Really nice if we go throw some support his way. Just be nice and say hello. Today's question is from Obsidian, basically asking about the 10,000 Star Destroyers I mentioned within the Zeistan fleet, and whether that meant that the Empire had less than 10,000 Star Destroyers at their height. I believe that the 25,000 number has been brought back into Star Wars canon, and if I remember correctly as well, the quote from the novelization doesn't say 10,000, it says tens of thousands, and I think it says most powerful fleet as well. Remember the Zeistan had that super laser, so you can kind of sort of explain away any discrepancy that way. Even if it does use the word largest, you can just sort of substitute powerful in there as well. Things get tricky when it comes to novelizations, and I found the new canon novelizations especially don't really focus a whole lot on the expanded universe, so there are sometimes um, lapses like this where there's some stuff that's put out that doesn't totally stick with the rest of the continuity. But that's all for today, guys. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any ideas, remember, especially for versus videos, leave it down below. Until next time, though, guys, this has been your host and friend, Eckhart's Letter. Have a good one, and may the Force be with you.